better have some oil for the chain. We've got a few pine trees to take down. We need to open up the light so these olive trees will thrive and produce olives again. First of all, we've got to do a bit of strimming, clear the brambles and the bracken so that we can uh, process and clear fallen trees once we've cut them. This is the big pine tree we want to take down. It's got a pretty big fork in it. We want to miss that olive tree because we'd quite like to keep that. And before we can take this one down, we've got three little ones behind me that need to come down first. I'm going to get on with strimming the brambles away so we've got a bit of clear area to work with and James is going to get rid of the three little ones. Clears the ground to take down this big one but that's going to take us a little bit longer so we've got a small one over there to uh, take out. This one's at a pretty good angle it's pretty crooked we're always worried this one's going to come down in a uh, in a storm so we it's clear over there we've got two olive trees to steer it down and get it in between but we reckon we can do it we're going to debark it first makes it a bit easier to see where we're cutting and it'll save our chainsaw blade a bit the bark holds a lot of dust and grit which is a blunt a chainsaw. There's a little wedge. In horizontal and out the little corner. Or? Oh yeah, in horizontal and then up from underneath. Yeah. That's for the wedge, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, jointly angles are hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't quite expecting it to go so quickly. It's actually a hell of a lean on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because actually we've gone a hell of a distance in. Yeah. We yeah, only yeah, actually yeah. need to go. We should have, I shouldn't have gone so far in there. That yeah. That's cut. Change is sharp in there. It does, yeah. I thought that. <laughs> Stick this one further along when I lift it. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Lovely. Oh. Hard as you like it. Well, this crooked old tree came down pretty easily, landed where we wanted, didn't break any of the olive trees. We've cut it up into firewood logs, got a bit left to do, we've run out of petrol now. Uh, 
and we'll let these logs dry for next winter. A little bit of lifting and carrying to do. We've got Dovey coming in a few days so he can help us. I like I want to try that. What do you think with trying that way? It is tough. So you're like actually aiming at the bottom of the lump of wood. Fantastic. I'm a log splitter. <laughs> <laughs> and you enjoy this, do you? Sure. So because there's so much weight that way, it's not where we want to go and then kind of start on this side and rattle with you and then around the corner, I think. Is that roughly the theory, Dan? Yeah. <laughs> it's all about keeping that bit of wood there intact so that when it tries to fall over, it goes that way and not that way. I'm going to count the pine cones. Before... Well, we better do something before the Doris's get here. That's the tree we're taking down, and that's the olive tree we're trying to miss. Quite like to miss the madronio, but at the end of the day, that will regrow really pretty quick. Straight, straight through the gap. Straight well, you, talk, you talked about Yay. it enough. <laughs> Good old Billy Ray. Brilliant job. Oh, hard to my mouth there. <laughs> <laughs> Now we've got the big task of cutting the branches off, cutting it all into logs and stacking it up to dry for next winter's fire.
YouTube it just shows that these the real, women are the real workers. Good afternoon, my name's John. I'm a uh, 48 year uh, old man. So this one, I'm going to cut into uh, bits to make a bench. Oh, what do we see with you on about? Another bench. Yeah, two stumps and a plank from somewhere out of the thick trunk section. The actual stump might be a single person seat. A bit like the cherry tree in the vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. But we need to let the chainsaws cool down and we're going to go and have some lunch. No rosé, we but are. we might have a beer. Well, this is the next tree to come down. We're going to send it that way, the opposite direction to the last tree. What we need to do first, Dovey, mm -hmm. is clear the bark off. So the big question is, where is this tree going to land? Where's the top of it going to end up? So, James has been watching Buck and Billy Ray for three months, and this is how you work it out. Yeah, well, I'm guessing about here. I suppose we'll find out in a minute. If you say over the top of the axe handle, up to the top of the tree, the end of it should land about where we're standing. So that means this bit's got to come off. If it landed straight, pretty close, it wouldn't have been far off. Yeah. yeah. If that's the same length of your arm mm -hmm. and you hold it there, then they're both the same length. There. So it's 90 degrees there and 45 there. Yeah. Yes. You would say, oh, I've got a small up. arm, I'm a small person, it can't work for me. And it doesn't if I hold the axe down here where you hold the axe. So. I was, it was explained that I have to put the axe under my oxter and here where Your I'm holding it, yeah, under my sweaty armpit, I don't have sweaty armpits, and then I hold it where yeah. that distance is yeah. and I still get to look cool holding an axe <laughs> square up against my body to make the 90 degrees here, yeah. my body's square and I came up with a little bit short of James. Do that I'll do wonders for me wobbly bingo wings. It's <laughs> <laughs> some tropical things and stuff. It's, up, you know, it's only like a 15 minute job, isn't it? It's all right. Don't know what's going on with this. It wasn't sound very happy there, though, was it? So the big chainsaw is not running very nicely, it keeps on stalling, but we've still got the little Husqvarna, so we're going to give it a whirl. From the last tree, we know we've got to go in from both sides, so we cut all the way through the tree, and we'll take it slowly, keep an eye on it, and uh, we'll get this tree down nice and safely where we want it to be.
fool's eye. Straight up in the drain, you? Right, and John, we're going to plant your tree right here. It's got some nice protection from the north. So it'll keep it nice and warm. We need a hole first. Okay, I shall take care of that. I'm just breaking the soil up a little bit and letting the, uh, the, the roots sort of find their own way. Can you remember what variety of lemon that is? Yeah, it's the rounded yellow types. But, uh, no, I can't. It's probably written here in Portuguese, yes. Or Latin. I think it was Eureka. Ah. Eureka moment. <laughs> Now we're just watering it in. We haven't got any peaches yet, and we do like the flats, uh, kind of donut peaches. Right, I think that's probably deep enough. planted and watered in. We don't need too much water today because it's pretty wet and it's going to rain tomorrow. Good. And this time we've got Pereira Roche. Roche? Pereira Roche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's oh, what my mind Mr. Mr. Ambassador. Pereira. With this <coughs> Pereira Roche. And the other, the other one, can you remember what it was? No. Mm, Roche. But this is the traditional Portuguese pear, isn't it? Yeah, it is a traditional Portuguese pear, but I'm sure probably France might call it Pereira Rocher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Davy had an easier spot, didn't he? Okay, so I think I've dug a hole deep enough. Um, we mustn't go above this graft, so that's looking good to me. I think we now need to tease this out a bit. How's that looking? Straight? That's what we want to see. Right. Put that stamp down.
Okay, so let's give it water. So, second pair planted. Thank you, Maggie. Shall we tell the story of uh, why we have this second pair? Mm -hmm. So this time last year, at Christmas time, we planted the um, first pear tree in the orchard, which is down in the corner of this section. Uh, we did that in Barney's memory. And Barney was my Labrador who had died about six, seven months before that. So it seemed like a really nice thing to do. However, we needed a second pair. So that's what we've planted today. And we'll keep coming back to visit them as long as we are invited and as long as we're probably making use of ourselves around the Kinta. So where we are to plant our hazelnut tree. However we do that. Uh, dig a hole. Dig a hole in. How big a hole? Quite a big hole. Quite a big hole, eh? Any fiddling with it or just straight in? Uh, yeah, tease out the roots a little bit at the bottom. and put the earth back in around it. Don't we need Maggie for sandwiches? <laughs> That's right, <laughs> being careful. It's more rosé for us. <laughs> Where's Maggie's exit point? Oh yeah, there. No, it's all, all a trick, Maggie. Thanks, guys. That's all right. It's only because you need so. We're giving this tree a bit of protection because this is prime area for the goats, the wild boar and the deer. And they'll all like to have a bit of this tree. What about the nuts? What's the purpose of the nuts? Well, the nuts are so we can make a decent nut roast from our own produce next Christmas. <laughs> well, maybe not next Christmas. <laughs> Good luck. Produce? <laughs> in, the, in the future. Sometime in the future. That's quite a manly stance you've got there, Dan. Manly and rugged. That's great, right, never rained around right <laughs> One water tree. Thank you, James. Mm -hmm. 